Shalom, everybody. Welcome to our special edition of Kabbalah Cafe Friday morning. And thank you all for joining us. Shalom and Erev Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat is going to be a special Shabbat, not only for the uh, reading of Parashat Truma, but also for Parashat Zachor. And therefore, for Parashat Zachor, everyone is welcome to come and join us, Bezrat Hashem, for our davening outside tomorrow over here. And looking forward to seeing each and every one of you. Um, and uh, it's a biblical mitzvah to hear the Torah reading. Before we begin, I want to thank uh, Gershom and Rachel Dandy for sponsoring the special edition of uh, Kabbalah Cafe for the Refua Shalema of Yeshua Mordechai ben Fega. He should not have any pain, no suffering, and he should have a, a complete Refua Shalema Bezrat Hashem, and he should be able to, 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 uh, to, be able to visit us and spend uh, Shabbos with us uh, much more often in a healthy way. I also thank Ryan Mordechai for, for hosting this special uh, shiur, amongst other shiurim. And I also want to, um, I want to, I want to dedicate this shiur for a special refuah shleima for my grandmother, Chaya Sarah Bat Esther. So this week we learn in, in Parashat Ruma, we learn about the building of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, and it's something which we learn about all of the special kelim, all the special vessels that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe to tell Am Yisrael to, uh, to, to tell us to, that, that we should prepare and we should contribute to the Mishkan and to the Beit HaMikdash. The holiest of all vessels was, the, was called the Aron, the Aron HaKodesh, the Holy Ark. And inside was the Luchot Abrid, the, uh, the tablets, and the Sefer Torah. Similar, <coughs> excuse me, similar to that, we have also Aron HaKodesh today with the Sefer Torah. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be taking out two Torahs, one for Parashat Ruma and one for Parashat Zachor. One of the reasons why the, the uh, Aron is considered something which is so special because on top of the Aron, we had the Kruvim, the Sherabs. And there are different opinions of how the Sherabs were created, uh, were, were, were formed, were made. Um, some of them, some say they look like two angels. Some of them say that we look, they look like two children. But one of the moving interpretations of this episode is that when Hashem was fond of the way Am Yisrael would act, then, if a, then the, the male and the female, the boy and the girl, the children would be hugging and would be embracing. And that was a sign that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was fond with what we did. And then there were some, then there were, then if God forbid, um, HaKadosh Baruch Hu was unhappy with what we did, then they were back to back. So we would like to understand today, why is it that, that the Kruvim were compared to, were, were formed like, like a child, like, like children, according to some opinions, which is perhaps the most common opinion of all. Is there something special with the fact, with the relationship between Hashem and us, through the, the concept, the prism of, of, uh, of children. The Medrash explains, the, the Medrash paints a picture, a very unique picture of how, uh, how Hashem's affection came to us through the Kruvim, through the Arona Kodesh. It was almost like a pillar of fire which would come down from the heaven between the two Kruvim, the two sheriffs, and would speak to Moshe Rabbeinu. So this was considered a revelation of godliness that came down through the two Kruvim, which were on top of the Aron. Let's go on for a moment to another portion, a deep connection 
between Hashem and Am Yisrael. And that was the Kaporet, which was the cover for the Rona Kodesh. In a sense, it would separate between the Arona Kodesh itself, the Holy Ark, and the two Kruvim that were on top of it. The Torah says that we have to place the Kaporet on top of the Aron, and inside the Aron we had the Eidut, the testimony, which was the, the, um, the tablets, the Luchot, and also the Torah. So Rashi explains that it comes to teach us that the Aron itself, without the cover, first you put in the, the, uh, the Luchot, and then you put the cover over. So from the fact that the Torah says that in the Aron you should put the Eidot, we understand that the Aron was complete even before you put the cover on top. So it seems to be that the cover on top of the Rona Kodesh is almost like a separate keli, a separate vessel, and not necessarily a part and parcel of the Aron, almost as if something technical. So there are, there are certain differences of, uh, in halacha, whether or not this cover is considered part of the Aron per se or not. But there's a special message over here for our generation. What is the message? Aron Abrit, the holy ark of the covenant, which is the ark of the Eidut, of the testimony, is a symbol of the deep relationship between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. Where is this symbol expressed? In the Luchot and the Sefer Torah that were inside the Aron. As Rashi explained, that the Torah, which is, a, uh, which is a testimony between me, Hashem, and you, Am Yisrael, that I, can, I commanded you the mitzvahs that are written in it. Which means that the Aaron itself, without the cover, symbolizes the Torah, which, which, which connects between us and Hashem. In other words, the cover is almost as if it separates. So when the cover is off, then it's more clear the connection between Hashem and us. But then the cover also serves as a strong bond between us and Hashem. We have this concept often when we talk about memutza, an intermediary. There are some intermediaries that, are, that, that, that form the, the connection and strengthen the bond. And there are some inter intermediaries that, that, that separate between. So the Medrash explains that Hashem finds himself in the entire world. And nevertheless, Hashem chooses to reveal himself to Am Yisrael through the Kruvim, through the Sherevs. And as the Medrash says, a very moving statement. Look at the love of Am Yisrael, how it's caused. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, who is infinite, Ein Sof, chooses to, quote-unquote, we don't know exactly what this means, but, quote-unquote, to limit himself through the, the Keruvim, through the Sherebs. In other words, since HaKadosh, which the Sherebs are part of the Kaporet of the cover. So since HaKadosh Baruch Hu loves us so much that it's worth it that for the benefit of Am Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, and squeezes himself through this limited area of the Keruvim. Let's think about it for a moment. The Aaron reveals the connection between Hashem and, 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 and the Jew through Torah, and the Kaporet with the Keruvim, they reveal to us a whole, an entirely different level of relationship with Hashem which is an essential bond between us and Hashem, even beyond the Torah. This is a very, very deep relationship. Like it says in the in Medrash, in the name of Eliyahu and Avi, Rebbe, there are two things in the world, and I love them very much. Am Yisrael and the Torah. Which one is first? 
And the answer is that Am Yisrael is first. Am Yisrael, the, the deep connection, the deep, the, the deep um, uh, relationship between Am Yisrael and Hashem is even uh, far beyond the relationship of Am Yisrael and Hashem, which comes through Torah. So this explains what the Zohar tells us, that there are three knots which are bonded. There's Hashem, the Torah, and Am Yisrael. So Hashem is connected to the Torah, and the Torah is connected to Am Yisrael. So the famous question is, so that's not called three knots, three bonds, it's only two. One bond connecting Hashem with the Torah, and then one bond connecting the Torah with, with the Jew. The answer is that in addition to the, these two bonds, there is also a third bond which connects Hashem directly with the Jew. So it's not, the connection, the bond with, it, with, with the Jew is not only through Torah. There is a connection itself between Hashem and the Jew, which, which they're bonded together with a, strong, with a strong bond, with a strong knot. And that, in a sense, goes far beyond the relationship of Hashem with the Jew, that is through Torah, which is through the, the, other, the, other, the, the other direction. So this, with this we return to the original question of why is it so special that there is an image of a child on top of the Aron, which that forms the Kruvin. Why is that so important that Hashem's love for Am Yisrael comes through and related to the image of a child? Very often we compare Hashem's love to Am Yisrael as a parent to, 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 to a child. Like it says in the verse, "Banim atem l'Hashem alokechem." You are children to Hashem, your God. So sometimes we can think that it's a little bit uh, an exagger an exaggeration to say so, because we know that the greatest love and 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 affection in the world is a parent to a child. The parent is is willing to do everything for the child, even to give their own lives for the child to do everything. But the truth is the opposite. That the real source of the love between a parent and a child is the So it's not that we're comparing Hashem's love to us to the, the, to the love between a parent and a child. It's the opposite. It's that Hashem, it's that the, the love between a parent and a child is compared to the love between Hashem and, and Am Yisrael. So we are literally considered children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Obviously, there's no way that we can grasp how that's possible. Um, and uh, it's, it's far beyond us. It's all spiritual. So it's very hard to, 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 ima to imagine this. But we know that that's the fact. Now, there's a very basic concept that you can see between the, the connection between parents and children. The difference between their relationship with little children and their relationship with, with children that have already grown. We love little children for one, for, for one reason. Because we are part of them. We don't see necessarily any specific uh, talent that they have, any specific uh, unique trait that they have. They're just cute. They're beautiful. They're children. They're, 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 they, they, are, they are who they are. When a child has already grown, then you love that every person has other, other advantages and other great uh, talents. So you tend to love even parents or children for the, for the specialty which, which, they, which they have. If you to ask a, a parents that are expecting a child, what kind of child are you expecting? Are you expecting a doctor, a rabbi, a lawyer? Or what, what kind of child are you expecting? They're most probably going to say, it doesn't really make any difference to us. We, we just can't wait to have a child. We, we can't wait to have this, this, this entity which, which unites the parents and brings continuation and future and, 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 uh, and pureness to the world and holiness to the world and success and bracha with the birth of every child. 
all of a sudden when the child grows up, oh, then there starts to be uh, all kinds of, of, of uh, ulterior motives why there should be a relationship, and, and God forbid, why there could be some time a little friction, at least in the revealed sense. But deep down, if you're to peel off the layers, you will forever see the deep relationship between a parent and a child. And this is the message of why there was the, the, the face of the, of, uh, of the tinok, of a child, upon the Arona Kodesh. To bring out that this emphasizes the this magnifies the, the 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 bond between Hashem and us, the fact that Hashem, so to speak, squeezes himself through the the hands of the of the uh, kruvim, is because Hashem is bond with us is like the connection between a parent and the child. The story goes that there were three brothers in the time of, of the Shoah, of the, of the uh, Second World War. And they lived in Russia with their mother. And when the fights, when the war came to their area, the mother took them to run away for, for weeks on end. One time they came to a small town and the mother found a little bit of, of, uh, of food. And then they continued further. But one thing bothered the mother very much. What is going to be with the education of the children? Until she met a Chabad Hasid that told her, if you go to Samarkand in, in, uh, in, in uh, Bukhara, then you'll see an underground yeshiva and your older son will learn with me and I will make sure that he'll grow up to be a Yerash Shemayim, a God-fearing Jew. The mother agreed joyfully and it was it was it was very moving to see the the to witness the 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 um, the way they they separated. And she gave she gave her son a big hug, and with all of her love that she had, she said, "I'm very happy that you're going to learn Torah." Several months passed, and once again she saw this chassid. He told her that her son is learning Torah very well in the yeshiva. And Baruch Hashem, he's very successful in his learning. But that was not enough for her. She wanted to send her second son. Just think what's going on in her mind in a war, in a war time where people barely have any money, but what's the number one thing in her mind that, she, that her son should be successful in her Torah. But the chassid did not agree to take her second son to yeshiva because it became a much more of a dangerous situation and he didn't want that it should be dangerous for the boy. But the mother did not give up. And she got her son onto the train together with the chassid, and he ended up being together with him, so he should take him to yeshiva. A few more months passed, and once again, she met this chassid. And this time, she asked him to take her third son. And his name was Isaac, was a little boy. And he, the, the, the chassid really, um, really did not agree to, to, take, to take the little son. But there's nothing that stands in the, in the way of the heart of a mother. And she planned to do the same thing, to get him onto the, like right before the door, door is closed, and, and to, to get him onto the train together with the chassid. But this time, the, the, something was messed up because the child held on to his mother very, very strongly until, until his mother said to him, Do you know what, Isaac? I promise you that I will save everything that I have. And in a few weeks, I will come to visit you in Samarkand in the yeshiva. And then Isaac went with the chassid. After a long while, the mother succeeded to come to Samarkand. It was very difficult. She went around in the train station. She didn't know where to go. She was never there. How was she going to find an underground yeshiva and meet her sons? In one moment, she heard a scream. Ima! Mother! And Isaac, the little Isaac, ran to her and gave her a big hug. So the mother was surprised. How did you know that I'm coming now? And the child answered, Ima, you promised, and I, know that, I knew that you were going to fulfill, to fulfill your promise. Every train that went by over here in the train station, I would wait when you are going to come. Because the mother, because you promised, and I knew that you were going to fulfill your promise. So what, uh, 
what a parent is, is willing to do for a child is, is anything in the world. And here it's, it's uh, very moving to see how the child was so connected to the mother that the, that the child waited until the mother was able to come. And this explains to us what, why it's called the kaporet. The kaporet, which was the cover for the Aaron, because it's mechaperet. It atones for the sins of Am Yisrael. What's the connection between kaporet and kapara? Because when a Jew, God forbid, does a sin, so he separates himself from Hashem. How can he strengthen the connection? So the Alter Rebbe says in the Tanya that if you want to, if you have two, if you have two ends of a rope which separated, and you want to reconnect them, it's not going to be enough to connect them once. You have to make a double knot, and that tights it, it ties it very tight, and and then it's it, it's it's able to to remain as strong as as it was before. And so Hashem tells us basically, what is the secret? to be able to re-strengthen our connection with Hashem and our bond with Hashem, that's on top of the kaporet, which is the kruv and the sheret. This is, you have something to lean on. This is the base that you can come back to Hashem. When we realize, when we come to the realization that, uh, that our bond with Hashem surpasses anything in the world, even Torah, so even someone who, God forbid, for a temporary amount of time, left the ways of Torah, it can always come back to the essential deep bond that we have with the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and then hopefully also build that in a revealed way through learning, through learning Torah. Like the mentor says, that just like a person with a son, when a, son, when a, child, when a, son, when a person has a, a, ch- a small child, if he does something wrong, his father's not going to send him away. Because it's a small child. So too, uh, I'm Israel. We are considered Hashem's, Hashem's small children. Even if God forbid we did a sin, Hashem will never ever send us away. We are always considered um, uh, deeply connected to Hashem. And Dafka, this love that Hashem has to us, as, as far as us being a small child, is much stronger than any type of other relationship. And that's why the sheriffs are put on top of the uh, uh, kaporet, which this brings the kapara, the true kapara, which is an atonement for anything. Even if a person sinned, we can always rely on the, the relationship of a Kadosh Baruch with us as far as the fact that, 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 we are, that we are children. And I would like to finish off with a story which was told by a, a great doctor over here in, in Eretz Yisrael. His name was his name is Dr. Talnir. He lives in, in uh, Nachalat Har Chabad in Kiryat Malachi. And he is a person with a huge heart that helps a lot of people, especially now during the corona. A lot of people consult with him. He's a very, very special man in a big tzaddik. He comes from a, a family which is non-religious. And he, he himself made a huge uh, change in his life. And, also, and, and, and uh, decades ago, he became a Chabad Hasid. So he told a very amazing story. Before the Second World War, his mother's family lived in, in Brussels in Belgium. When the danger of, of, the, of the, the Nazis, Yimach Shemam, came closer to, to Belgium, um, his grandmother hid his mother by a Catholic family. Um, the, the, the girl had a European look, and the, the Catholic family raised her as if she was one of their children. But the, the, the child did not have an easy time at all at this family. They made her work very, very hard. They made her go with them to church. And they would always um, uh, make her work hard. And they, 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 uh, they, um, they ridiculed her for who she was. One night, she felt that she's unable to take this anymore. She, she laid in bed and she said to Hashem, Master of the universe, I'm going to make a deal with you. Every night before I go to sleep, I'm going to say the Shema. And you will bring back my mother and father, which I'm so, I, I, I yearn for them. I miss them so much. And I have no idea where they are. The girl survived the war. And it became clear to her, unfortunately, that her parents were murdered in the camps. She left 
the ways of, of Yiddishkeit, she came to Israel and she lived in a kibbutz. Her shul, she told her children the deal that she made with Hashem. And she said, Hashem didn't do his part of the deal, didn't give me back my parents, and I, on my side, stopped any connection with reading Shema and Davani. Years later, when Tal came, did Teshuva, and he built a beautiful family, he had four sons and four daughters. He has, Baruch Hashem. Even though the, the ways of life that he had are, were very different than his mother's, of course, the, the grandmother was always happy to see Tal and also the beautiful family that he would bring to her to visit. One time, Dr. Nir came to visit with his children, and it was on Yom HaShoah. And he remembered what his mother told him about the deal that she made with Hashem. All of a sudden, he felt a, a need to say the right words. And he says, Ima, Mom, you asked Hashem to return to your father and your mother? Look at your beautiful family. I am your son and I have eight children. And all of them are called the names of your father and your mother and your brothers and your sisters, which are not alive anymore. Did you ever dream that you're going to have such a beautiful uh, family? Is this not considered, in a sense, that Hashem gave you back your family? The mother was very, very emotional, and she burst out, she burst out crying. But uh, unfortunately, she could not, she, she did not change her ways because of this uh, story. But the story is not over. In the beginning of this year, uh, in Cheshvan, right after um, the Chagim this year, in November, the parents of Dr. Nir, they were going to celebrate 70 years of marriage. And the family planned a beautiful celebration. But unfortunately, the mother was in the hospital, and Dr. Nir decided to, to celebrate in a very, in a very pri private and modest way. And Dr. Nir says as follows, exactly when we finished saying the L'chaim for the, for the anniversary, that, that he, he received, uh, he, he was in the hospital, he received a, a telephone, uh, 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 he, he received a phone from the, from the nurse that the situation wasn't, wasn't good with his mother. And at that moment, and she, he heard on the phone how uh, the nurse, Rivka, that he knew very well, came to visit, and she said the Shema Yisrael for the final time with, with Dr. Tal's mother. And this was something which brought for, full circle for, for his mother that he, she had said the Shema as being a child, and she had the Zichut, unfortunately, in, in the scenario that it was, but at least in a special way that these precious children, the grandchildren of of of, of, uh, of, of Mrs. Near, the grandmother, that they had this, the names of her parents and they had the names of, of her siblings. And so the 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 what a what a child, what a, a pure child can do to parents and grandparents is something that no one else in the world can do. And so let's put a uh, let's remember and share the special message with our family and friends this Shabbat, that we have to remember that our relationship with Hashem is very strong through Torah. That's the Arona Kodesh that was inside. And that was the Sefer Torah that was inside the Arona Kodesh. And, and when you see the, our, our mobile Arona Kodesh tomorrow moving around with the two Torahs inside, you, we, will, we will admire it much more because we read in this week's parsha about the about the Arona Kodesh. This is our mobile Arona Kodesh. We also have one Baruch Hashem um, at Chabad. Th thanks, thanks very much to, to Mrs. Debbie Berkowitz. But our, beyond that, beyond the, the, the Torahs inside the Arona Kodesh, I would suggest that that's when the, the Arona Kodesh is open, and even if the, the Sefer Torahs are not in there, the fact itself that the Arona Kodesh is there, that represents a special bond that we have with Hashem that goes far beyond the relationship with Hashem that is through that is through um, uh, Torah 
which is a special bond, and no matter what level a person is on, we can always reconnect easily w- with, with Hashem. I would like to, to wish a special, uh, once again, a special Rufuah Shlema for Yeshua, Mordechai, Ben Fega, and everyone should have a Shabbat Shalom. Don't forget Parashat Zachor. Tomorrow it's a biblical mitzvah to hear the erasing of Amalek, because it's the Shabbat before Purim, and of course, I sent out the email yesterday about all the details about our Azazaza this coming week. Next Friday, we're not going to have a Kabbalah Cafe because it's Purim. We're going to be very busy um, sharing the mitzvahs of Purim with so many of our friends. And Bezrat Hashem, in two weeks, we'll see you once again for our Kabbalah Cafe. And right after Purim, we're going to have a special celebration marking one year. Baruch Hashem, can you imagine? Marking one year of these daily classes, Baruch Hashem, um, of our daily classes in Hasidut at 9.30 in English. And Friday mornings, Kabbalah Cafe, Bezrat Hashem, uh, we should be able to continue this. The, uh, the corona should, should, should cease to exist. And we should be able to celebrate the Zat Hashem with more and more shiurim, shiurei Torah, learning Torah together, which is also what we talked about today, the Torah, which was inside the Rona Kodesh. Thank you very much and Shabbat Shalom.